Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today we've got a little bit of an interesting different diversion where we're going off to the north. Well I say the north, it's kind of the Midlands in fact. We've got two things to do. First of all, I'm going to go and collect some bits for Beryl the Beetle because uh, apparently everything that's for sale for beetles is north of Birmingham. And secondly, a car artist is going to draw one of my cars while they talk to me for a podcast and another YouTube thing. So that's going to be quite interesting as well. I'll tell you all about that when we're in the car. Meanwhile, I've got to choose a car to take. My choice had actually been the Crown Victoria because that would be so cool to get a nice bespoke artist thing done of that would be awesome unfortunately the MOT ran out last week I'm waiting on some parts from Rock Auto in America so that's going nowhere for a little while until those parts arrive which is very annoying um, second choice was going to be the Alpha 145 because I absolutely love that car unfortunately the headlights don't work which is why I'd forgotten they don't work and then I realized when I was looking at it the other day that when you turn the headlights on not only do the headlights not go on the tail lights go off as well so some earth issue there so as it's winter it's quite bright light now but come three o'clock this afternoon you're going to be needing the lights so that does slim it down a little bit mini will be the third choice but um, that one isn't big enough to put any stuff in the boot so it comes down basically to Hippo or 200 VI and I genuinely don't know which one to take uh, Hippo makes a funny grindy noise, 200 VI, window doesn't go down, and I probably need to put the window down for the interview thing that he's doing. Either way could be fun. Hippo has got cup holders though. 200 VI, this is a car I've done loads of work to, we bought it as a non-runner, fixed it, repaired it, made it better, it's a really really good car, and it's been a big part of the channel and a car I wanted for a very long time. Hippo is, although I don't like SUVs, I do like real 4x4s and I consider it a real 4x4. Um, I've wanted a Mark 1 Freelander for a long time and it's become like a real family favourite. We've got the roof tent thing for it. So, Tuffy, has that got, will the fact that's got cup holders outweigh the fact that that's actually a lot more fun to drive? Word from our sponsors and find out which one I took. Furious Driving, presented by Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining and you can protect, clean and care for your car with 10% off site wide using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week. And, now like Dumb and Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all eras of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below. Well, a decision has been made and as you can probably tell, I'm in Hippo the Freelander. And the choice came down to a couple of things. Firstly, cup holders. I've got cup holders in this car and it's a very long drive. It's about two hours to the first stop to go and get the um, bits for the Beetle. Then it's another half an hour to go and see Ian. And then it's about two hours back again. So yeah, it's a long old drive or my cup of tea. Secondly, uh, it came down to the stowage because I'm getting some fairly big bits and I think they would fit in the uh, green 200 VI quite easily, but that's a bit cleaner and a bit smarter. And this one has been used for lugging stuff a fair bit lately anyway, so it's already dirty. And finally, it's still pretty grotty out here and this car, as you know, has got a pretty, well, it's got some rot in the chassis already, which I've hopefully taken care of, but you know, this is this is the car that is now most abused. So it kind of, it makes sense to keep on abusing it. Also, and as Ian pointed out, I was on the phone to him about what car to take yesterday. We're going to Land Rover country. Coventry is, well, you know, kind of on the, on the cusp of, of Solihull. Solihull, sorry, I should say. Wow, lights are on. It's very misty all of a sudden noise is still there not sure what it is but uh, I'm wondering I'm, I'm, I did actually jack the car up at the back and spin the back wheels some more just to sort of try and work out where that noise is coming from and I cannot identify it so I'm kind of hoping it really is the tyres I might actually stop somewhere and bump the tyre pressures up a few extra pounds above what it should be just to see if that makes any difference or not I can feel drag in the car as well it, it doesn't feel as, as sprightly as it should it never feels very sprightly but it feels even less so now. Anywho, right, let's just move on. Going north, by the way, going, stopping in Rugby first of all, to go and get Beetle bits, and then going on to Coventry to see Pop Bang Colour. Now, Ian from Pop Bang Colour, you have seen before on the channel, he is a lot of car shows, so most of the car, big car show reports I do, he turns to be there, we stop and say hello. Also, I've done a, a video about him, and now he's kind of returning the favour with a new video series that he's doing interviewing people in their cars while he does a continuous car drawing picture of that car. So that's quite cool. Filming me, talking about my, my car and my channel. 
and I really wanted it to be the Crown Victoria because I've got a picture of my Rover 2000 that he drew a while ago and I wanted the Crown Vic to go along with that. Funny in that, I really wanted a picture of the 145 because the 145 is so cool. But I can't drive all that way with no headlights in winter. It's not sensible. Typical Alpha problem. Also, he did say that he has previously drawn a red Alpha 145. So that makes it a little bit different. So we want something different to do as well for the channel. He's also done a Rover 200. I'm not sure whether he's done an R8 or an R3 because I did Google and I couldn't find out. So he did say he's not done a Freelander. So this will be the first Freelander he's put into the continuous car drawing series. Which is nice. Onwards. And now we reach the Dartford Tunnel. Interesting side note for the um, story on the Rover 420 GSI Tourer collection caper, which incidentally was another car that was in the contention for, for doing this run, but I didn't really want it. Continue on to the M25 towards Stansted Didn't really want to load dirty stuff in the boot of that. But, um, what was I going to say? But yeah, the, uh, the, the load space cover is really tricksy on that, I don't want to mess around with it, so left that one behind. When we went up to go and collect that car, I've got a Dart Charge account. Shush. Um, yeah, I've got a Dart Charge account. So we put my friend Jason's car onto the Dart Charge account, sailed through there on the way up, sailed through there on the way back, and of course put the new Rover 420 on the Dart Charge account as well. A week later, we both got fines because I tapped in the Rover's number plate wrong, you know, sausage fingers um, on the phone and Jason had misremembered his number plate when he was in the car, so between us had managed to mess up two number plates and get fined on both. Luckily, the Dart Charge people were really nice, and when I rang up to explain what had happened, they just pay the regular um, toll over the phone, and that was all right, which is a, a big relief. Another side story, I actually know two people who have broken down in this tunnel with like terminal car explosions, and um, both of them have managed to bring this is called gridlock southeast England <laughs> when this particular junction or bit of road stops everything stops on all the motorways you both know who you are <laughs> and whenever I take an old car through here it is my biggest fear that something is going to go wrong it's going to go clonk and I'm going to stop and then I'm going to be on the news basically being next to lorries in tunnels, or anywhere really. Wow, it's misty. This car was completely iced over this morning. Ironically, it was the only car that was completely iced over. Everything else was fine, just this one in the corner. The one I was going to take somewhere. I was going to wash it first thing, but you know, you can't wash a car covered in ice. It's just silly. And that, that queue to my right going the opposite direction is exactly what I fear causing due to some sort of mechanical malady. Uh, I don't want to be the one who, I don't know, runs out of oil or wheel bearing falls off or something in the tunnel or on the bridge and then just, yeah. This means the A12, the A13 are both going to be banjaxed. I've seen it go all the way back to the M11 before and then that's just trouble there as well. That is seriously bad. Okay, this is not too far today, so I'm guessing something's only just happened. Oh, the M25 is the absolute worst. Well, this isn't good. Although the sat-nav on the phone does seem to be uh, taking this into account. But yeah, still, this isn't good. A 13 minute delay according to the, the phone screen. Not good at all. Right, I just accidentally opened the window and I can hear the sound reflecting off this barrier wall. There's like a chunk, 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 chunk with the wheel. It's different to the grinding noise. Discourage an orchestra of bad noises that worry me. Right, 
right, here we are at South Mem Services on the M25 where it meets the A1 first pit stop of the day. We're about 60 miles in, 70 miles to go. So more or less halfway-ish. Definitely time for a pit stop as we've been on the road for about an hour and 40, which is ridiculous. It should just take about an hour to get to this particular point. But yeah, just check everything's okay with the car. Top up my drinks, go to the loo, that kind of stuff. What is annoying though is it can coincided perfectly with the second round of Popmaster, so I'm going to miss that. Really annoying. Oh, nice old Bedford over there. Always curious what's going to be in the car park, apart from the old Bedford truck. Tasty Porsche, nice. Not a lot else of interest in here today. 99. Right. Terrible parking from that Defender. And well, while we're here, let's have a quick feel of the wheels, make sure nothing is feeling like a boiling hot rim, because that's always an indicator that you've got a sticking brake or a bearing going down. Everything feels cool though. So hopefully, actually the brakes do feel a bit hotter. Maybe that brake is binding a touch. And off we go, once again, back on the motorway. 72 miles to go, one hour, 15 minutes, till we're into rugby. And, get and off we go again, back onto the road. I've got Audible hooked up through my Bluetooth adapter in the, in the, in the lighter socket thingy, so I can finally listen to a story. End of, so you've been publicly shamed, which is actually really interesting. and makes you really quite scared of writing anything on Twitter. It's the terror of the modern age. Right, on again we go. Motorway, straight up the M1. Onward! This actually isn't the first massively long trip we've done in the Freelander, because last year, well, no, about a year ago when I first got it, we actually took it down to Devon when we spent a week, well, only meant to spend three days on the island of Lundy, but Storm Eunice blew up and we stayed there for a week because we couldn't get off the island again. Poor old hippo spent the uh, week with his alarm going off on top of a cliff. Um, Near where you travel out from the mainland to the island, which might explain why it's got rust in the floor now, but possibly I don't know. Because the entire week the alarm was woo 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 and the battery was dead, dead, dead. We're currently sailing past the Watford Gap services, which means that we are officially entering the north. That's a capital T and a capital N, the north starts here. Speaking as a southerner, this is the point where I don my oxygen mask and take my jabs, just in case anything goes wrong. I'm only joking, the north is lovely, honestly. Just wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> Again, I'm joking. Right, finally, we're coming off the M M1, so not the M11, the M1. Up onto, what yeah. motorway is this? Onto the A5. I mean, we've done about 125 miles of motorway so far today. And I'm 10, 10 minutes from Beetle Parts. It's a weird phrase, I don't think I'll say again. Use the left lane to keep uh -oh. the A48. This thing does roll. You forget how badly these things wobble around the place. Forgotten this area, it's basically like a slalom course. Like when you drive around the edge of Milton Keynes, all blimey. It's more fun <laughs> hot hatch than it is in a four wheel drive. So I'm now heading towards a farm where apparently there is a barn full of beetle bits. It's a Saint, oh, it's a distribution centre. I thought, what earth is there a Sainsbury's and a Tesco's around here? But it's a distribution centre. basically here now, I just need to find the right gate. Black gate down a country lane. How hard can that be? Got that one. Very 
pretty round here though. Sneak preview of what I bought, but I'm not showing you any more than that. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, that was a successful haul. I'm now driving on to go and meet Ian, pop band colour cook, um, about half an hour from here over in Fargo Village. And uh, yeah, so came for what I I'd bought online already and found a cornucopia of car parts relating to Volkswagen Beetles. A barnucopia, if you like. And uh, that was all good because I found a couple of other bits for the car which I wasn't sure I was going to be able to find. I mean, I'm trying not to spend too much money and you know blow the budget and mean that I'm just only getting back what I spend on the car. But I want to make it as nice as possible at the same time. So hopefully adding value, adding you know saleability, exchangeability possibly, making the thing just generally nicer thing to be in and be around. So yeah, I'm rather pleased at that. reveal all in the next Beetle video. I'm trying to build the anticipation and keep the excitement up. So, uh, you know, good times and all that. Beetle video will be up probably a day after this video, so then, then you'll see what was in the grand hall. Whoa! And into the countryside we go again. I just missed it but I'm now in Warwickshire, Warwickshire if you prefer. And it is a stunning day. What a nice day to be out having a drive in the countryside. Apart from the horrible grindy noise, the Freelander is performing absolutely flawlessly. We've done about, gosh, how far have we done? 130, 140 miles, I think, something like that. And um, we've used, a bit more than a third of a tank of fuel, not quite half a tank. So between a third and a half tank of fuel. And as I put in, got 75 pounds worth this morning, which was about 45 litres, I guess that means. Hang on, let's get through this bit. Back to the hard maths. About 15 litres of fuel, about three gallons, maybe four gallons of petrol. So the car's probably doing about 40-ish to the gallon, perhaps. Do you know what? Now, these junctions and roads look strangely reminiscent of the, uh, the ones Ian Seabrook and I were driving down to and from the campsite when we were staying in, the, in Bob the Camper during the NEC last, last year. Right, uh, just time for a quick final pit stop. Can we get through here? Yeah, we can. Let's go. Top up of a cup of tea, use the facilities and all that kind of thing. Get hit by a Range Rover. All good. Wow, a Daihatsu Kopen. I have to park next to that, that's so cool. Really, really cool. Now there's a landmark, the Ferodo Bridge. I'm sure that's a famous thing to see when you're driving into Coventry. In fact, I'm worried about the average speed camera thing because I've driven into here and I didn't see any average speed limit, speed limit signs for the first few miles, in fact. I guessed it was a 30 because the lamp posts and things, but the sat nav was saying it was a 40, so I was doing 25, you know, hedging the bets. No good of it, it's actually a 20. I'm really hoping there's no congestion um, charge type thing, ULES thing in Coventry. I didn't read of one, but if there is, I'm going to be stung by this car. At the roundabout, take the third exit onto Gulston Road. Ah, oh, we're right by the university here, I think, aren't we? I haven't been around Coventry for a long time, but I do remember they have a really weird quite in clever university building, or three. Yeah, that building down to the left, I think, is where there's a really mad university building with a Harrier jump jet in the basement that the engineering students take apart and put back together again for practice. So the all right, Fargo Village, Coventry, Vintage Vera. Ah, okay, so here I am, Fargo Village, first time I've ever been here. Arrived. 
and I can't get in because something's parked across the entrance. Okay, uh, that's awkward. Oh, there we go. Nice. <laughs> well, you weren't expecting so that. This is really you? exciting. I'm now about to drive into Ian's temporary studio, which is actually in a large bar, being followed by a drone. So we pitched up in the studio to have the Freelander drawn while Ian is chatting away to me. Just waiting for the drone to get into position as soon as enough people are cleared out of the way because I can't fly the drone when there are pedestrians and passers-by. It's going to be quite tight in. Yeah, so, yeah. As close to the wall as possible. Righty out, yeah. Right. right, in we go. Hello, you are right? How's it going? Good. Nice to see you. Come on in. In we go. Hold out your hand. Ian's Pop Band Colour Studio is here at Fargo Village and we've taken over a bar to use for the next stage in his continuous car drawing exercise. As far over as it goes. That already is locked. <laughs> Okay, yeah. back again. Is that roughly where you... That's great. Oh, okay, right. My Rover 2000 was continuous car number 291 when he drew the car over Zoom during lockdown. He's now done over 1,600 of them and we're coming back for a second one. But now, as he does at many shows up and down the country, he's using his mobile studio, a converted Chevy Cruze, which is literally a portable art studio. And for the purposes of his podcast, Instagram Live, which we're about to start, and for the YouTube video, which will be out edited later on, he will be interviewing me from inside the studio while I'm sat inside the Freelander. <laughs> Just a B rolling the B roll. It does make it C roll. <laughs> I'm actually the third person who's had this. Petrol Ped from YouTube is on here. Once the director was happy that the sound was good, the camera's in the right place, and the cars are all positioned properly, and Ian was ready to go, we started chatting, and a good three quarters of an hour later, we'd finished. I don't think I even covered half the cars in the collection, but we did talk a lot about the channel. And this is a really fun thing to watch him create because the initial outline of the car, the every solid black line pretty much, is drawn in one continuous sweep of the pen, which is why it's called continuous car drawing, because partly because he's drawing a car a day during lockdown, which has now carried on for three years, but also because it is a continuous line all around the outside of the car and all the details. Really clever concept. So this, is, this one is tagged as drive-in, drawn out, which I quite like actually. So this is the final picture of the car. It's like a caricature that captures all the chunky, friendly, sweet funness of the Freelander. But we've really captured the essence of Hippo here. I say we, it's entirely Ian. And this is gonna look fantastic on my office wall. I won't spoil the entire process or the interview. You can go over to his channel to watch all of that. Right, we are done going home now. So that was a really fun, about 45 minute chat after the uh, the crew got everything set up with all the different cameras and the lighting and all that kind of stuff. And that's all going to be on. I'll see you out. Thank you. That's my Pop Bang Colours, YouTube, Instagram, everything else. I won't spoil the surprise of that by sticking it on this channel, but you can go and find me a full conversation over on Ian's channels. I'll put the links in below. We're going to make that. Yeah. <laughs> Down, Lovely. Oh, we're good now. Bit right and down. Yeah. Oh, we're good now. Uh, can I go out that way? Or. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So Ian's just doing a couple of photos of the finished picture with the car in the background. This is really, really cool. I'm looking forward to hanging that on the uh, on the wall. But that was so cool. So now I've got two of my cars now drawn by Ian. See you later. Bye bye.
coming past right now is possibly the coolest car I've seen in a long time. A 7 Series, super clean, with a roof rack and ladders on it. That is just awesome. So now, just a long cruise back home again. 150 miles, two and a half hours of gentle chugging back in the Freelander. But now we've got a lovely sunset to drive into. Stop and grab some coffee in a bit to keep us going. Might even find a fresh audible to listen to. Today has been a good day. Really good fun chatting to Ian. I'm looking forward to seeing the finished video on his uh, Instagram Live and on his YouTube channel when it's edited and put together. That, because that was done with a full crew, multiple cameras, mixer putting the vision together, nice someone actually monitoring the audio a world apart from the kind of videos I do on my own standing in front of the camera and hoping it's still pointing in the right direction and that the audio hasn't gone fuzzy so yeah that was a real eye-opener being on the on the receiving end of all, of all of that that was really good fun I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and well the next video out after this will be some more beetle fettling I started doing some beetle fettling a couple of days ago and now I've got some more bits to continue the fettling so the fettling will continue a very fettled beetle indeed. Right, well, thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this little video and, well, join me again next time for the next one. And don't forget to like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. You know the drill. And well done, Freelander. I'm hoping I'm not saying this too preemptively if we've got quite a long way to go. Right, I'll say goodbye and leave you with some fade out to a sunset. Oh, there's a plane over there.